Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Franchise Hockey Manager. I'm loaded into a save here that I just finished my first year and I wanted to uh, just show a few features, a few things uh, that showcase what makes this game so interesting. Uh, if you are a fan of hockey, and I don't just mean the NHL, I mean hockey. If you are a fan of hockey, you will love this game. So, you know, right now we're on this NHL, just the beginning of the season screen. But just let me show you, uh, if you click on the team here, you can see we not only have the Penguins, but we also have the Baby Penguins and the Wheeling Nailers in the ECHL that I have control of. And then if you go to the NHL and you look at uh, this tab, we now see all the leagues that are in this game. I'm not going to list them all, but you can see you've got U.S. and Austria, Belarus, can all these Canadian League teams, Czech Republic, all the way down to Switzerland, and everything in between, and you have access to those players. Uh, it's really... The depth of this game is the strength. Uh, I'm going to include some negatives in this review, so I just want to make sure I say from the outset, the depth of this game is by far its strength. Uh, the depth of the roster. So let me go ahead and show you my roster. Now, there's been some term turnover. If you know the real Penguins, you know that there's a bunch of people that are different here. But, you know, you see your, this is the, the, the NHL team here. And we can go to the lines, and you can see we have all the even strength lines with uh, offense, defense, uh, goalies. I didn't fill out the shootout and extra attackers yet, but we've got the power play, penalty kill. I guess we're just going to wing it on penalty kill. I need to fill that in still. Uh, but you can see the, the sheer depth here. Then, if you go to tactics, this is another strength. There's tons of tactics. You can do tactical tendencies for the team. But then the, the even crazier part for every individual player. So like, you know, we have, we still have Sidney Crosby on this team. So he's obviously a playmaker role, but look at all the different roles you can choose from. You've got goal scorers and offensive forwards and playmakers, power forward, two-way forward, grinder, defensive forward, and then enforcers. So you've got a ton of depth here. And then you can, you know, if I want Sid to maybe be not hitting, uh, maybe shooting more than passing, I could adjust that, uh, which is pretty crazy amount of depth. I barely even touched this, you know, scratch the surface of that. You can also do it at the, at the uh, unit level. Uh, but one sort of, concern that I have about that is that your players get injured so often it's really hard to set tactics that stay I mean individual st th tactics are one thing but what I've done tactics wise is just make sure that everybody has their uh, their major role identified I did notice that that seemed to matter if you didn't have your major role identified that the players seem to play a, a tad bit worse uh, so I wanted to mention that. Uh, there's a, a happiness rating, a fitness rating, uh, a game rating, and then their overall ability, which just gives you a sense of, you know, hey, let's make sure that we're starting, uh, you know, either dis uh, particularly we should be starting Tristan Jari because he's a three overall rating, and like this Fitzpatrick guy that I have who's scratched right now uh, is, is not dressed because he's only 1.5 ability. Um, this really, I think a third strength of this game is that it allows you to get to know the depth of your team. So, you know, like I said, I'm a Penguins fan, and if I wouldn't have let so many players go in the offseason, we would still have them. Uh, players like Zach Aston Reese and Chris Letang and Brian Rust all left in free agency because I didn't, I didn't go after them aggressively enough. Uh, if you played outside the park, which is the made by the same developers. Uh, it's the baseball version of this game. If you played that, you'll see a lot of similarities between the two. Now, let me talk about a few negative things as well. 
first of all, there's no easy button for how to call up players. Uh, in fact, there's not even any easy explanation for how to dress players. Like, let's say, let's say I just I wanted to put a player in here, and let's say I I want to put B Bjorkquist in there. I uh, it's okay. First of all, that wasn't even what I was trying to do. But let's say I was trying to to bring. It won't let me because he's not dressed. How do I dress him? Well, you click on him and you think, what the heck? Where do I go? Uh, it takes a little while to realize if that was what I really wanted to do, I would right click and then dress the player. And then once they're dressed, you can very easily drag them over. You're, you're, it can't be here. And I don't want to go there. That'll replace him. You have to get it right there. Um, and I accidentally moved Peterson out of his defensive spot. So it it does it just doesn't explain it to you. There's no prompt that explains that. So how to uh, dress your players is difficult. And then calling up, you actually go to depth charts, which isn't what I would naturally think of. You would think of like a roster move or a transaction, but it's not that. And then you know you have the players in green are your at the big club so if i wanted to bring up redeem zahorna to play on my fourth line for example i would have to right click on him and then call him up to pittsburgh uh, and i could also send him down to wheeling if i wanted to so that's something to keep in mind you're kind of responsible for figuring out like you know, maybe this guy who's a one and a half, st I mean, he's 34, so I, I don't know that I would do that. But maybe some of these one-star players with a little more uh, overall potential, maybe they're ones like this Clayton Phillips right now is in the EC. Oh, he is in the AHL. Okay, I'm sorry. I had those backwards. Anyways, you get the idea. You can adjust your players and move them around that way. Uh, so setting lines was a little bit difficult. Now I'll show you another thing that sort of irritated me about the UI and setup. Like, let's say we're ready to play our first game. It's going to be in a few days. Watch this progress bar when I do this. I want to go to opening night, and it's going to do this with the progress bar, which is cool. Like, which gives me the indication that when this gets to somewhere, progress is made. But it doesn't do that. It just sort of like this is in real time it's happening and you have no idea what you're progressing to or how long it's gonna take uh, it's nice to know this is sort of like the spinning wheel on Xbox uh, well, where does it end uh, at times I gotta be honest at times the game feels a little bit like uh, A, a little bit like an injury simulator. Uh, we haven't started playing any games yet, so right now the injury list is just uh, Mike Matheson with a fractured knee. But I have found when you're simulating, you know, a week or two at a time, a ton of players are getting injured. So the day to day ones you have to just scratch and replace, and the ones who are have a more serious injury you have to move over to your injury list. It can be a bit tedious, and that's not the game's fault. That's just part of a question of, like, whose job is that, and could that be automated? Like, could you have a setting that says, if somebody's going to be out more than a week, automatically move them over to the injury list? Like, something like that. You know, there's an open spot in the roster now, or in the lines now. Who do you want to replace it with? I don't know. It just gets tedious. And it's difficult to figure out how to solve some of these problems because there's not a lot of explanation, you know, names that you hover over, like, this is great information here, but it's not always clear what to do. Like, I figured out how to dress players because somebody on social media told me. <laughs> and I figured out even how to get the, the game full screen because somebody on social media explained it to me. That's in a setting on the main screen that I didn't see, and it was not, frankly, intuitive to me. Uh, it's often I found difficult to diagnose problems when you uh, when you do play a game. It's difficult to see just exactly what your team is doing incorrectly. 
you, you can get like a game rating from your players, but it's hard to say like, oh, okay, you know, Sidney Crosby's to being too aggressive. I need to, to put a playmaker up on his line with him. And it's hard to tell, is it, you know, if I have a, a, a three star winger on my first line, is that enough? Do I need to go out and get a player? And player acquisition is another thing that I find very challenging on this game compared to OOTP. The when you when you trade in and outside the park, you just go to the league and find a trade. So here with this game, when you want to make a trade, you have to go to trade offer and it brings up the screen and it does tell you this, but it would be nice if I could just say, like, let's offer up, you know, this player. I can't even do that. But let's say I could offer up this player and then maybe have a button here to say what the Ducks would would want. You know, it says that they might want a right defenseman. So let's just throw it. He has a no trade clause. Perfect example. <laughs> But, you know, let's say there's somebody like this. They will never accept this offer. They have too much salary. But even if you switch it up, it's really difficult to... You don't get any counter offers. And on OOTP, there's like two sides, and you're able to kind of negotiate and say, okay, what about a prospect? What about a pick? What about some money? And you can tweak it until you get a perfect deal. And I spend hours in that menu tweaking trades to get players that meet a specific need on my team. And that just doesn't, that is a huge part of what it is to be a GM. And it's, and it's frankly missing in this game. It, the trade opportunities are awful. I, I mean, I, I just, I can't, I can't sugarcoat that. It's a significant letdown and a game that should be about player acquisition. I did one draft, and it was okay. You know, you're going off of your scouts. Uh, scouting, the there's there's a great depth in scouting. Let me see if I can if I can show you that. It gives you a look. You know, I actually I must have lost a few of my scouts, so I need to hire a few more of those. Which you can do here. There's tons of them. Look at all of them available. Tons and tons of scouts. So you can get them and, and put them in different locations and then they'll they'll scout the players for you so that when you get to the draft, you know if they're any good or not. And they can scout like these other leagues. So if I wanted to go look at players in the Czech League, um, well, I, I shouldn't have a roster here, but um, if you wanted to find like, a, you know, I, I want to approach this player in the Czech League, you know, maybe then I could go offer him a contract. Uh, but Columbus already has the rights to him. But it's the idea, right? The idea of being able to go and find a player from another league. We have ratings on him, all of these things, because we have a scout in that league, which is really cool. I really appreciate that. Like, like I said at the start, the depth is the best thing. Uh, but the inability to easily acquire a player like that. Like if I decided, okay, let's negotiate with the Blue Jackets to get that player, it's almost impossible for the negotiation to work. Uh, and I've also run into some some illogical contract negotiations. Uh, it just seems like there's something wrong in the, in the logic and the way that they work. I've had players who expired uh, you know, their contract expired. I've had players that when they, when I tried to offer them money, they rejected it. And I had a player that I gave them exactly what they asked for. When you negotiate, you can, there's a button to, to offer exactly what they're asking for. The player said, okay, sounds great. And then another team just tripled that asking price and stole the player out from under me. And that would be nice if, if there was a little more opportunity to counter that. And maybe I did something wrong, but for me, for somebody who's been a, a is a veteran player of general manager modes, I pl I've played the NHL game and played a lot of GM on there. I've played a OTP. For a player like me to come into a game like this and be so confused at times, it's 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 off putting, and I don't feel like I can construct a roster 
in the way that I would want to because it's difficult to diagnose the problems with your team and it's difficult to acquire the players that you want. And I think that makes for a, a dangerous combination. Uh, and the last thing I'll say is I also tried to make another save where I wanted to have an expansion team. So you would think go into the NHL and maybe there's like a league settings, but there's not because I'm not in commissioner mode because I didn't know that you needed to be in commissioner mode. Uh, that's something that should be explained somewhere at the very opening. Like if you want to add an expansion team, like, uh, and for example, as another comparison point, and I'm only comparing to the same game because they're the same devs. When you want to do that in OTP, it is at your game setup. Would you like to have an expansion team? And then all you do is click yes. And there's another option that asks how many teams you want to add. And it, it's much more fluid. So I would like to do this. The only reason, the only way I even found that there's an option here, you have to wait until July 1st and you have to be in commissioner mode. And the only reason I know that is because I looked it up on Reddit. And that's just from a game design standpoint. I don't understand having your players need to use social media or a website like Reddit. Like, why is there not a help function or just, you know, something here that says, do you want to add a, t you know, in the off season prompts, do you want to expand the league? How many teams do you want to add? Something along those lines, I think would be really helpful and really necessary. So for my final takeaway, you know, I don't have a fancy graphic and sorry if I'm rambling a little bit too much, if you've clicked away. Uh, but if, for those of you that are still listening, uh, my, my final takeaway is it is a really deep and fascinating game uh, simulation. The amount that you can be involved is a little bit tricky. It feels more like the kind of thing that you would set it up and let it run to see what the results were. Like, I want to, you know, bring the 1991 Penguins into the modern day and see how they would do. And just bring all those players as a, as a roster file and drop them into today's NHL and see how many goals Mario Lemieux would score. That seems like what this is designed for, like deep simulation of statistics. It doesn't seem like it has the the gameplay element of, oh, I want to tweak my lines from week to week. I want to move this guy here. I'm going to send this guy down to the AHL and bring up this hotshot who's doing well. The, it doesn't have um, good feedback. Like it, the end of game reports don't, necessarily encourage how you want to make your moves and the inability to tweak your roster kind of hinders the game at the end of the day so uh you know full disclosure i i i was given this copy of the game by the developers and so i, I do want to say thank you uh to them for for sending over the game I enjoy it and I will play it even after the review. I will play it and I and I may end up putting in as many hours in this game as I have with OOTP. But uh, some of the control issues I think are going to keep it from becoming a, a favorite of mine. Uh, but I will look forward to the changes that they make over the season and certainly look forward to future iterations of the game because I think the substance of it is great. It's just some gameplay things that make it feel like you're a little bit out of control. I hope that helps, and I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, please drop a like, and if you're interested in more simulation content, please uh, like and follow the channel. Thanks so much. Bye.